reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the word, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining fire station, where dreams can come through, waiting there for you. Thomas and the Christmas Ball. It was the Christmas season on the island of Sodor, and Sir Tom had it scheduled more passenger trains. All over the island, families and friends were gathering together for the holidays. This year at Natford, there was to be a special Christmas Ball to raise money for a children's hospital. The money that was going to be used was for charity and for benefit from children's toys. The engines thought this was very exciting and someone would be especially chosen to pick up the Christmas tree and the supplies needed for the party. This year, everyone was very excited. Sir Tuppen Hat, or the Fat Controller in other words, is bound to give the job to me or Henry. Either one works. No, importance always leads you to bad things. You're often not going to get the job anyway. I think me and Dougie over here will get the job. Yeah. Oi! I should get the job since I'm very strong, stronger than Gordon and Henry over there. Oh, stop your muckering. I'm bound to get the job because me and Duck are great western and proud of it. Yeah, you were proud of it all right, until you fell straight into a turntable well. The engines <laughs> were Thomas hoped that he would be chosen for the job. He would never let Sir Totten Hat down no matter what happened. So the next day, Sir Totten Hat didn't pick Donald or Douglas, nor Murdoch, nor Oliver, nor Doc, nor Henry, or Gordon, or even Mavis. He chose Thomas. This year, Thomas, you must pick up the supplies from Brendam Docks. You must be careful, though. Snow drips have blocked the trucks. The snow is very thick indeed. So be careful. Don't worry, said Thomas. Victor and Kevin are repairing my snowplow anyway, so there's nothing to worry about. And he set off. I hope Thomas is alright, said Duck. Why is that? asked Percy innocently. Because my driver was watching the news last night and he heard that there was going to be a blizzard around 2 o'clock. What well, time is it right now, Percy? It's 1.30 right now, Duck. The blizzard should be happening in approximately 30 minutes. Oh dear, said Duck. Thomas is going to be snowed in. I hope he'll make it in time. The party's tonight. Thomas hopped across the countryside. I bet Gordon and Henry won't pick because they were being so ignorant, he said. And I bet the other engines weren't picked because of how proud they were inside. As Thomas puffed into the docks, the Christmas tree and supplies were just about ready. In a few seconds, the tree was loaded onto Thomas's flatbed and the supplies were loaded into the freight cars. Be careful, Thomas, said Whip. There'll be a snowstorm in a few minutes, so you better get there quick. Don't worry, Whip, said Thomas. You can always count on me. At Knapford Station, the other engines were waiting anxiously for Thomas. They were worried indeed. Thomas should be here by now, said Toby. Where is he? Maybe he's stuck in a snow to the seven, cause that's something I always want to say, said Diesel rudely. Shut up, Diesel. No one wants to hear your comments and stuff, said James angrily. I just hope he's okay, said Edward. Not to worry, said a voice. <laughs> it was Sir Tom. I'm putting up a search and rescue chain. We're gonna search by three different uses of transportation. Rail, land, and air. Air will be used by Howard the helicopter. Rail will be used by Donald and Douglas. And road will be used by Elizabeth and Bertie the Bush. Ugh, here we go again. Harold knew what his mission was, so he took off to the skies. Don't worry, Thomas, he said. We'll find you, I hope. Elizabeth drove the roads like a maniac. We shall find our grandeur, Thomas. 
represent. Thomas! Thomas! Welcome to Pita I don't know, Donald. I don't know. Thomas was okay, but he was worn out and was almost out of water. Oh dear, he said. I hope someone finds me. I can't go on because of my water gauges. Suddenly, Thomas heard a sound he knew well. Harold, he said. Hello, Thomas. Are you alright? I'm fine, Harold. Is someone out rescuing me or something? I'm afraid some friends are. Bertie the bus, Elizabeth, and Donald and Douglas and myself. Are you alright, by the way? I'm alright. I'm running low on water, though, Harold. What should I do? Well, old friend, we have no choice but to put the water from the river into your tubes. Don't worry, it's fish-free. So Workman went back and forth and back and forth to low Thomas's water. And in just five minutes, Thomas was ready. Thank you, Harold, said Thomas. I couldn't have done this without you. No need to thank me, said Harold. I have a mission that's done already. Now I must get to the party. Cheerio! Must get to Napford. Must get to Napford, said Thomas eagerly. We tried everything. The twins. But we couldn't find them. Then everyone listened. They listened with wonder. There was Thomas puffing into the station. He had made it. Everyone was happy to see Thomas. Even Sir Totten Hat. All of the engines let out a big loud whistle. And cheered for their number one friend. By evening it was time for the party to begin. All of Thomas's friends came to the party to celebrate. The tree looked wonderful. A lot of money was made to help the children at the hospital. Thomas wanted to say something nice. I would like to thank everyone on Sodor for hoping I would make it here on time. I couldn't have done it without all of you, he said proudly. It's time that we start seeing Carol, said James. Well, what are we waiting for, said Henry. Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends had a marvelous Christmas, and all the engines hoped that all the children in the hospital would get all the toys they wanted, and they hoped that Santa Claus would pay them a special visit, even on Christmas Day, the time of giving, sharing, and friendship. Cross the nation, it's Christmas. 
You'll be laughing on the other side of your boilers soon, silly steamies. <laughs> <laughs> yes.